I want to read a passage. It's almost a monologue. Um, after the murder of this uh, this kid in, in Lower East Side, um, the whole community is kind of uh, turned upside down looking for the shooters. And um, one of the people who didn't get the message that he's not supposed to live in the Lower East Side anymore is this junkie who uh, sees a crime of us, a crime of opportunity, uh, snatches a bag in front of Schiller's and tries to get away with it. And uh, he gets grabbed by the bouncer. And uh, first thing he says in a panic is, let me go and I'll tell you who shot that white kid. And so they have to truck him down in the middle of the night to see the catching detective, who's this guy, Matty Clark. The, the two cops in this scene are Matty Clark and there's a guy named Maya Kono who's another cop who basically lives in the, in the windowless bunk room, has been for six months, comes out every once in a while in a toothbrush, shower clogs, and does police work, and then goes back into the bunk room. So this is about 3 o'clock in the morning, and this is taking place in an interview room in a 7th precinct. This city, Lester Kaufman said, one knee crossed over the other, a cuffed hand dangling languidly from the restraint bar. People are doing so well, you know? But you can't, can't ask them for shit anymore. It's never been so bad. Maddie grunted in sympathy. The bouncer had told him that the first thing this guy had said when he grabbed him after the attempted purse snatch in front of Berkman's was, let me go and I'll tell you who shot that white kid. I swear, man, Lester said to Maddie for the tenth time in the last half hour. I just said that like in a panic, like the first thing that came into my head, what's left in my head. Unfortunately, Maddie believed him. Lester yawned like a lion, revealing a dull steel ball pierced through his tongue. Iacone, roused from sleep for this, yawned in response. But I'll tell you, man, I'm really worried about my girlfriend. I gave her $100 to get me something, you know, get me well. She said 15 minutes and left me standing there three hours. I had no idea where she went, what happened to her, 15 minutes. I mean, I never would have done that if she didn't leave me there like half the night watching everybody come in out of that place for smokes, drunker and drunker, half the damn bags right on the sidewalk. Another titanic yawn, the dull, dirty tongue pierce winking. Sucks, Iacone said. Strapped for a partner, Matty had cajoled him out of the bunk room with the promise of overtime and an easy commute. I mean, I'm fucked, I know it, but can you just check your computer to see if she's in the system? I'm hoping she got collared, nothing worse, but... What's her name? Anita Castro or Colin Nieves? Iacone rose and went to the screen on Yolanda's desk. Where'd you get $100, Lester? Matty asked. Where? He shivered, then coughed into his fist. Oh, man, you don't want to make extra work for yourself with questions like that. No? Seriously. Maddie let it slide. Nothing, Iacone called out. You, did you check Brooklyn? No, just Manhattan. Could you check Brooklyn? She scores on South 2nd, South 3rd. No one scores in Manhattan anymore. Manhattan's dead. You guys took care of that. Lester recrossed his knees, a slice of grimy red long john peeking out be between his pale blue ankle and the cuff of his jeans. I mean, what the hell happened to her? She was going to take me to the hospital. I have fluid in my lungs. That's no problem. We'll get someone to take you as soon as we're finished. Nothing, Icone called out. She got a third name? She's not in the system, huh? Jesus, what do you think happened to her, he asked Maddie. And me here, this is a felony too, right? Not necessarily. Depends how you say what you say. You know, vis-a-vis -vis sincerity, remorse. I am remorseful. I didn't menace. I didn't threaten. I didn't say anything. What's it, terroristic? All right, just capture that in your statement. In fact, if you want, we can even write your statement for you. But Lester, what can I tell you that you haven't heard a million times before? You help us. We help. You think this could go down as a pet law? I just, I don't even want, I picked the fucking thing up off the sidewalk. I don't even think anybody was going to notice. When that big black guy started running after me, I was like, here, take it. I didn't even get to open the damn thing. I have no idea what was in there. Obviously, I'm not a pro at this. Now, now, don't get down on yourself, Iacone said from Yolanda's desk. You know, I got to say right now, we're pretty much eating out of garbage cans, me and Anita. But a few years ago, we had us a store worth like $200,000. Oh, yeah? Maddie's turned to yawn. What kind of store? It was like a punk boutique? No kidding. Can I have a cigarette? Jesus, I gotta get to the emergency room. All right, Maddie clapped his hands. Here we go, one time offer. The hell with the guys who shot that kid. Just give us a stick up team, just some names. Anybody you know works the hood. They check out, not only do you get a pass here, but we take you to the ER, get you squared away, then we go look for your girl. A stick up team. Lester shrugged, recrossed his legs, looked away. 
You know, she used to use Carmen Lopez. That was like her professional name at this one place out in Massapequa. She's a bar dancer, exotic, very good, very popular. I had a regulars. Guys would like to see her. And she could go to their house or something and borrow $30, $40, but she's four months pregnant now, so resting his brow on the curve of his free hand. I don't know. Maybe it's time to go upstate. It's getting too hard out here, you know? That's it.